The Rig 01 CP, let's check it out. The Arex Rex-01 pistol hit the market just a few years ago. Um, what was really surprising is its popularity because it is a double single action hammer fired uh, with an aluminum frame. But it takes so many cues from the SIG P226, yet there's a lot of differences. Really it mimics the same quality as the SIG but about half the price. These are imported from Slovenia from the Fine Group and again these guns have been very popular and there's good reasons. Now the Rig 01 CP stands for compact pistol. Uh, it is a 9mm. It has this new satin nickel finish. Nickel tends to be very smooth and slick uh, which is going to actually aid in reliability. Uh, this is a 15 in 1 uh, magazine capacity and uh, we're going to check to make sure the gun is unloaded and we can see that it is. Now, now that we have the hammer back I'm going to show you a few features. Uh, you know, I recently did a review on the standard full-size Rec Zero, and uh, same features apply to it. But it does have a manual safety, so that just locks the hammer. You can carry this cocked and locked. Uh, but it also has a decocker right here, very similar to the Sig, and we can just drop that down. Uh, it makes it a very safe pistol to carry. A lot of guys are kind of leery about striker fire pistols because there's typically no external safety and if that's your case then this is a great pistol to look at. Now one of the things about the controls when we have the hammer back um, you know we can put our manual safety in place and still drop our decocker. Uh, so that's a pretty cool variation with this pistol and of course again we have our slide stop right here or slide release. Now one of the things I'll say about this handgun up front because a lot of times guns imported uh, into the US are, are fairly inexpensive uh, and that's one of the things about the Rec Zero line is it is a really high quality firearm. The slide is high carbon steel it's made from a solid bar stock uh, so it's a good solid piece. The barrel is cold hammer forged and it's 3.85 inches. Uh, this handgun really is pretty close to the size of a Glock 19 and so we're just going to go ahead and bring out a Glock 19 and as you can see uh, they're pretty pretty similar in dimensions. I think with the beaver tail here it does come out just a little bit longer than the Glock. And the dimensions of the pistol are 7.1 inches in length, 5.1 inches in height and just under an inch in width but once you get all the controls and everything back here at the back it hits the just under one and a half inches. So this handgun would be considered something for concealed carry. Um, now the grips are a panel grip. One thing about these grips is Hogue already makes aftermarket G10 and different type grips. The grip is not super aggressive. In fact there's some small little circles down here or raised circles and then of course this area right here which the grip itself is, you know, a little bit loose. Uh, you do have the serrations here that are going to help, but uh, if you really want to up that, again, you can go, you can put on some Hogue replacement grips, and those would work very well. And currently on the Fine Group website, uh, they do offer these models with G10 grips um, already in place. Uh, it does come in a FDE frame with a black slide that's really sharp. It comes in just the standard black and of course in this chrome and two-tone finish. It does have an aluminum frame. It's very well finished uh, and you can see it's just a, it's a very beautiful handgun. Uh, linear serrations on the front and back strap. Uh, diff the SIG has the wraparound grip so this does away with that and then it has this high beaver tail effect right here to be able to get your hand up on the pistol. 
Uh, of course, you've got a, an accessory rail here that is 1913 Picatinny rail. And then we have serrations on the front of the trigger guard. It's a fairly large trigger guard uh, for gloved hands. Uh, the serrations are good and solid. Uh, but one thing I'll warn you about is with the nickel finish, uh, it does kind of bring those serrations. It makes them a little bit slick. So, but, you know, not too difficult to get a hold of. Uh, we have our front serrations right here as well for press checks. The slide is cut right here to make it a little thinner on top. Um, and it does have the three dot sights. They are metal sights, uh, but True Glow makes a set of night sights for these already, and I'm sure that there are other companies that possibly do. I just happened to find the True Glow sights. Uh, the frame itself, I did mention that it was aluminum. It is 7075T6 aluminum. Uh, one thing about this company is that it is in Slovenia, and it is an ISO 9001 compliant company. They do make a lot of handguns for the military there in Slovenia. Uh, and they are NATO approved. The mag release is steel uh, and it's checkered and it is on both sides so it's ambidextrous plus you can see that your frame safety is also on both sides. Uh, your decocker is only on one and your takedown lever is only on one side. But the finish of this handgun is impeccable. Uh, very Just like the original large frame or the uh, standard frame. I mean these guns are just extremely well made. And I know when I first saw this review uh, from Tim at Military Arms Channel, uh, this gun was one that withstood the gauntlet test as well as any gun he's put through it. Right here on the slide, we have Rec Zero 1CP 9x19 uh, that is embossed into the metal. And these are imported by Fime Group out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, and then, of course, Slovenia with all your serial numbers. Uh, metal trigger. Now, the gun does come with two magazines, but... Fine Group also offers the full 17 round magazine with this little bumper uh, and that allows it to feed and so you can carry 17 in one in here if you want to. Uh, and then of course this is removable if you have your full size and you can carry it that way. I do want to show you the grip uh, with the magazine. It does extend it. It gives you 17 plus one. Uh, they do offer a 20 round magazine that comes with their tactical model which has a threaded barrel and RMR cuts. Uh, which is really nice and that also fits you can take this little piece right here on the magazine and fit it and then you can go with 20 rounds so there's a lot of capability also uh, kvar.com offers a number of different holster systems for this with hogue and standard direct zero holsters and others so one of the things about this pistol to me not only the compact but also the full size is that there's already uh, starting good aftermarket support which really makes it nice because a lot of times you know with new pistols coming into the market you have to really search for any kind of accessories whether it's magazines holsters or you know whatever you're looking for one thing about these magazines is whether you get the 20 rounder or all the way down to the 15 round compact they're 2950 so uh, that gives you just an idea of the price which is really a great price for these magazines and all the Rick Zero One pistols do offer a limited lifetime warranty uh, and those can be serviced through Fine Group. So it's, you know, with their U.S. affiliate, it makes it nice to be able to have that support. Also, to give you a general idea of the size comparison between the full size and the compact, uh, it's definitely shorter in the grip. And then here it's about an inch shorter in length. So it does get it down to that concealable carry. Uh, the, definitely the full size is a fairly large handgun. Uh, but again, I mean, the cues for the 226 are just evident but yet there's a lot of features that this goes beyond. Now very similar to the SIG uh, in design and profile, uh, it does have a fairly high bore axis and you can see right here it, it rides pretty high above the hand. Uh, the slide does come down to about right here. It's a pretty tall slide. Uh, so that's one thing if you really like the low bore axis, which I typically like low bore axis, uh, and I'm going to compare it with this Glock just to give you a good idea you can see that there's a considerable difference in the bore axis. Now, again, you know, SIG P226, which has a exactly same dimension in bore axis, those guns are known around the world, been used by law enforcement and special forces uh, for a number of years uh, to good effect. So it's all according to your preference. I personally prefer a lower bore axis for myself, 
uh, because typically when the slide comes back, I like it lower on the hand. Uh, it seems to mitigate a lot of recoil. But with these pistols, they seem to shoot very flat. Now let's make sure the gun is unloaded. We're going to check the trigger. Uh, we have it in single action, so we're going to check it first. There's a, just a very smooth pull right here. Then we hit a wall and a nice, very crisp snap. Let's check reset. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Now, double action trigger pull, of course, it's going to be much heavier. It's smooth, but it really starts to stack there at the end, and then we have our snap. Okay, let's check the double action trigger pull weight. Yeah, that's about 13 pounds. It's a pretty heavy double action trigger pull. Single action, we're going to go with the Lyman trigger gauge. Four pounds, 6.5 ounces. Now the Rig Zero One pistols are rated for plus P ammunition, which is typically about 10% uh, more pressure than your standard round. Uh, but these guns are tested at the factory at 30% higher than Sammy Specs. So uh, it's a very strong, solid handgun. Now the weight on the compact model, one pound, 14.4 ounces with the magazine, full size model, two pounds, 0.4 ounces. We're gonna load up some Freedom Munitions 115 grain, uh, and this is their new manufactured stuff. Uh, you can get a 5% discount using Suit00 uh, on Freedom Munitions website. And guys, these Lula loaders are just awesome. We took it down to the range. I shot about 500 rounds through it. Uh, it was, it just fed like a champ. I mean, we had no malfunctions, not even any kind of uh, slides not holding back. It just ran whatever I put into it. Uh, one thing about it, because the Rex Zero, I really enjoyed shooting it. Uh, and of course, I did the review just recently. But the compact, I was expecting a little more muzzle flip. But guys, to be honest with you, it just is a great shooter. I mean, it feels good in the hand. It's not a lightweight pistol. And really, it's about the size of a, a Glock 19. So it's not a subcompact, but man, it is, all the ergonomics are there, the grip felt good in the hand. It was just a, a fun shooting pistol. Unfortunately, my target stand bit the dust, but I did have some stickers from easy to see targets, and so I just put it on the steel, and I just wanted to get some, just an idea of the accuracy. I could already tell when I was shooting steel that it was just dead on. Uh, I mean, repeat shots were right there together in one group. Now to disassemble the firearm, we're going to remove the magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, first thing we'll do is bring back our slide and engage our slide stop, which is the decocker. Now if you'll notice, on the standard model, when you pull the takedown lever, it just popped open. Uh, but for some reason on this one, uh, it's not fixed there. So what I've had to do is, is bring back the slide just a touch, and then I can engage my takedown lever. Um, so now we're going to take out our recoil spring and guide rod, which it is a steel recoil spring and guide rod. Uh, the barrel, again, this is cold hammer forged and it's 3.8 inches. And then we have the slide. One thing I want to note is just the precision that's done inside the slide. Uh, right here at this little area, there is a little bit of tooling, some tooling marks. Uh, but everywhere else, it's just a very well finished pistol and again the slide itself the exterior looks beautiful here you can see the interior of the frame large locking block uh, the slide rails are large and then here on the back so uh, it's a really well-built handgun and that field strips the pistol uh, to reassemble drop in your barrel your guide rod and recoil spring 
I need to make sure that it does protrude out of the small hole right here in the slide. Then we just take it, put it back on the frame. And then when you bring it back, your takedown lever will just go ahead and go back into place, hit your decocker, and the gun is functioning. Now as far as price of the Rec Zero, uh, whether it's the compact or the full size, they typically run around the $600 range in that area. Uh, I believe the retail price, and according to what finish you get, what grip styles you get, dictates the price, but you can look around the $600 mark. One thing to consider is the SIG P226, they typically run $1,000 plus. So while this is a seems like a fairly high price because of the hammer fire, it's a little more expensive to produce than a lot of your striker fire polymer frame pistols. So it's still a great buy at even $600 compared to comparable firearms of this quality. Now as far as pros and cons of the pistol, some things I like and I don't like. Uh, one of the big things that I love about this pistol is how smooth it shoots. Uh, it's really easy to fire. Of course that has to do some with the heft of the pistol, but really the ergonomics of it, it just feels good in the hand. I was surprised because of the high bore axis, but uh, it just fed. I mean the recoil was just really shootable. Uh, the accuracy was exceptional. Uh, all the controls are pretty good. I mean, everything's right there where you want it, uh, just like, you know, the old school type semi-automatics. Uh, and really, guys, that's what I grew up on. And the finish, I love this finish. It's super slick, and um, even, but it doesn't make you think that you're gonna drop the handgun. I mean, it feels pretty decent in the hand. The sights are easy to see. They're very bright and uh, easy to get on target. And of course, you know, you can change those out for night sights or whatever. I think this will make a good concealed carry piece as well. As far as the cons go, um, it, it does have a high bore axis, and that's a little different. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, I typically prefer not to, but honestly, I really enjoyed shooting this handgun, um, which, you know, guys, I love shooting guns anyway. I like to adapt, and that's one thing that's really important to, to consider, is that when you're shooting different type firearms, you don't really want to get stuck with just one way. I mean, it's good to have some variety uh, when shooting. Also with the double single action hammer fired, it's just something different. Uh, so that could be a con for some that really like the striker fire, the consistency over and over of the same round. One thing that I do love and is an advantage of the double single action is that if you hit a dead primer, uh, you can get a second strike capability just by pulling the trigger again. Of course, price being around the $600 range uh, and according to what finish and what grips and what sights you get, uh, you know, that could be a con for a lot of people just because we're used to seeing that $450, $500 range for your polymer frames. I will say that the grip, I would like to see some more texturing on the grip from the factory. Uh, you can get hoe grips to take care of that. But with the grip, it's, again, I didn't have any problems with it down at the range, but I could see in really wet conditions or if maybe I had some blood on my hands or something, this could slip. And so, I, again, I think I'll go ahead and get some hoe grips for this one. As far as newly being imported, uh, sometimes that can be a con, but there's a lot of companies that have already jumped on the bandwagon for aftermarket support, whether it's the grips or the sights, uh, holsters, different things like that, uh, because they see that the popularity of this handgun already. So while these may not be the easiest to find, there are definitely a lot of sources. I know KVAR is one of the companies that works with Fime Group, and uh, that's a great source for a lot of stuff. For more information, you can go by and check out the Fime Group website. Um, that's a great source for a lot of the details. And again, KVAR is a great source for accessories and even for purchasing the gun. I mean, there's just a lot of options out there. And guys, if you want to support the Suits channel, you can go to suitsgear.com. We are offering a lot of different personalized Suits gear. Uh, also, my Patreon account as well, and I'll have that link down below in the description. Uh, but it really helps. Many of you guys know that a lot of videos are being demonetized here on YouTube, and uh, it really helps us to keep bringing fun gun reviews. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
incredibly well and definitely okay. uh, the slide itself comes kind of uh, and uh, these guns are really something else to shoot okay I don't say that I don't sound like bull crap gaining a lot of, of excitement 